Memorial Day, memorandum, we play with the same word and with, with the same organ in between our ears. You understand it, we know how to use the results. We know that without the regular, we cannot go to the special, and we need days, ceremonies, and events in order to ask ourselves how to activate this mechanism to memorize and then to put it in a way and then to use it for certain purposes. You are in a room named after Salvador Dali. You, you see around the plaques, these are the paintings of the, ten, the 12 Jewish tribes, the sons of Jacob. One is dedicated to all of them together. So it's the, that's the 13 plaque. And you can later on go to your own memory if you read the Bible, the last, uh, four, the, the last 10 t chapters of the book of Genesis, espe especially <coughs> ch chapter f uh, 40 s uh, 43, and to decipher. And this method of deciphering from pictures is done to texts, then to hopes, is part of the questions that you taught us to ask in a better way. We look forward to find the al logarithms, to under the understanding, and then the message how to recuperate, to heal, and to bring solutions to problems that we use words, at least ourselves, humble historians, whenever we refer to these activities. Many efforts are invested in order to achieve it. <coughs> This special initiative of the Hebrew University is going ahead, ahead of everything, and shall I say again, ahead of everything at the Hebrew University? Because nowadays when you ask about, we ask about priorities at the Hebrew University, we do not need a second moment. We say it in a very deliberate way, clear way, not necessarily with the happiness of every member of the every member of the university community. It's one of five major priorities of the Hebrew University in terms of academics, in terms of fundraising, in terms of creating world communities. And that's the meaning of the ceremony of today. <coughs> the EPFL, Professor Abisher, you did in your individual, personal history, things that others do in groups and as institutes for many generations. The generosity of you, Mr. Amon, has been taking place, is going to take place, will take place in the future. Your personal charm, involvement, and knowledge, Professor Makram, and all of, the, all of our team, some are present, some work in the labs. That's part of the work, some teach. They do not have the opportunity to celebrate they do the regular work, like yourselves, in other occasions. I came to, to, God, to greet ourselves, to congratulate ourselves, and to commit ourselves for the future, and I'm going to sign in order to say that we are committed. It is not only a symbol, it's a procedure. You started already, there is a signing, then there is a concretization of it, and then the execution of it. These are the processes. The commitment is celebrated in these events. I thank you for taking us all through. I apologize for my colleagues at the Hebrew University for not fully meeting the expectations that you expect from time to time for us. Believe me, and you know it for true. From day one, even before I was elected president, and from now on, we look forward to your achievements. It's not only I, it's we. The university as a whole, all faculties now understand, thanks to your time, efforts, and openness when you go from one faculty to, a, faculty to another to explain how this one, I mean the brain studies, is going to be the common denominator of the university, therefore of the world of science. Thank you very much. When uh, critics and journalists speak today about uh, universities, they often describe us, describe us as living in a, an ivory tower. This uh, originally biblical image, which comes from the Song of Songs, 
and which started circulating in the particular pejorative uh, meaning only in the 19th, 19th century, uh, presents the scholars as isolated, as detached from society and from the cares of society. And close to it is also the description of the scientists as a recluse, uh, sometimes plainly misanthropic, uh, sometimes plainly mad, uh, working frantically in the lab. Scientific work can often be indeed frantic, even today. But it is anything but an ivory tower. Networking and mobility, exchange and cooperation, transfer and translation of knowledge are the buzzwords that set the pace for the dynamic world of science today. Some of these buzzwords also belong to the specific vocabulary of neuroscience. Uh, Professor Ebischer, who works on tra gene transfer, here we have one. Indeed, the world of neuroscience can serve as an excellent source of imagery for the dynamics of scientific exchange, but it can also serve as a first-rate uh, example for it. In the attempt to crack the secrets of the human brain and to understand its breathtaking achievements and to find the cause for degenerative debilitating diseases, neuroscientists combine force, combine forces and reach out beyond narrowly defined fields of research and across disciplines forming scientific cooperation and embarking on mega projects that ignore institutional and regional boundaries. The driving force behind such moves is twofold. It is the curiosity to understand and it is the wish to cure. The enormous energy that goes into these ambitious projects is equaled only by the enormity of the challenges. We celebrate today the signing of an agreement, and I insist on the word agreement rather than contract, between two top institutions of higher learning, the Hebrew University and the Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne. This cooperation is a perfect example of the engaged, mobile character of neuroscience today. The document we sign is a token of the commitment to excellence. It is also a declaration of modesty, as it bespeaks the realization that the challenges of neuroscience today are bigger than what a single university can confront alone. And the combination of excellence and modesty guarantees that we will have other reasons to celebrate in the future, the celebration of achievements. Thank you. Thank you very much, professors. There are many professors in the room. I had the um, privilege over the last few years to witness and to understand the great achievements that were made around the world, but specifically at the APFL at the Hebrew University in many areas and more specifically in the one of brain. And I always thought that for whatever reason there was not enough relationship, not enough collaboration or exchange between the two great institutions. Professor Abisher transformed the EPFL in a way that is goes beyond the border of Switzerland and recognized internationally, which gives the school and, and Lausanne and Switzerland a dimension that we never had before. Um, the Hebrew University achievement and reputation are not to, to be proven anywhere, and it's not for me to list them, and they are also remarkable. I just saw that in an area of where technology, science, computer, uh, methodology is taking an increasing place, at the end of the day, luckily, human beings make the difference. And I thought 
that like-minded people like Professor Abisher, Professor Ben Sassoon, who I knew by reputation and now personally, and many other professors at the uni uh, Hebrew University had probably a natural understanding. And Elon, you said, thank you for pushing. I didn't have to push very much. <laughs> um, when things are natural, they just happen. And I think this is what we are witnessing today. Thank you very much. Mr. President, Mrs. Ray, to dear friends, first, uh, I would like to thank you for your hospitality today. I must say it's a very moving uh, experience for me to be here on the Holocaust Day. And I was very moved to see the participation of your students. And you could feel that there is a real spirit to this university. Let me be a little bit personal. You know, for me, Israel is very close to my heart. I remember when I was a child, uh, my father bringing me to the university, University of Fribourg, a small town. And there was a plaque there about Heim Weizmann, who in fact spent some time at the university. And I do remember him telling me he was a founder of the State of Israel to some extent. And, and this was part of my youth. And of course, when you speak about Albert Einstein, we believe also, because EPFL is part of the ETH domain, and of course where you have two schools, ETH Zurich and EPFL, we were founded only in 69. Zurich was founded in 1853, but we are of course very proud <laughs> to have had Albert Einstein as a student. Now, unfortunately, we didn't know exactly how to promote him, <laughs> so he left, <laughs> and that's what we're trying to change to some extent now <laughs> by changing a bit of our policy. Now, also, what strikes me is I've always, when you go abroad, you ask, you know, what is the relation that our university has with the university you're visiting? And of course, as much as it's close to our heart, we do not have that many relations. And this is something, and I've asked my colleagues, to be very uh, honest, to say how many relations, student exchange we have with Israel. And it is, to some extent, disappointing. Switzerland has rather few uh, exchange programs with Israel. And I think this is a problem. And I think we have to find a solution to that. And I think the memorandum of understanding is a good way to, I think, uh, correct partially this. Because I think I'm a strong believer in exchange, in mobility. Certainly the professors, but the key thing is the students. And if we want a, fewer, a, sure f a future for this world, a better understanding of our various cultures is going to be absolutely essential. Now, of course, for me, this is a wonderful day because I must admit that I'm a bit biased when I speak about the brain. <laughs> this is, uh, I was trained as, a neurobi as an MD, but as a neurobiologist. And in fact, it's very nice to have friends around. Uh, the first one that, you know, EPFL is only an engineering school, and then we decided to start a life science initiative in 2000. And as a neurobiologist, I wanted to have somebody that could have the vision uh, for the next generation, for the real uh, uh, challenge in neuroscience, and that's where I've convinced Henry Markram, while he was at the Weizmann, and also planned to leave for MIT just to stop by. And, and, and he was about one week from, <laughs> in fact, from signing at MIT. And I've convinced him not to go over there, but to, to stay in Lausanne and to start our program in neuroscience, because I thought that he had the vision. And then he introduced me to his friend, first Idan, Elan, and more recently, Haim. And this is really, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Philippe uh, Amon, because he brought us together to a wonderful evening. And that's really when we decided that we were going to do something together. Now, I have to, to realize that I have, I have a bit of a split brain. Because when I talk with them, I talk to them as a scientist and would have great ideas. <laughs> and they came with, I think, a very ambitious plan, as they should. Now, when this thing landed on my uh, administration, of course, they're always a bit afraid. <laughs> as you know, we have to be afraid. <laughs> we have to make this a reality, and we see all the hurdles that are going to come ahead. But I think as a first step to sign an MOU, that will f hopefully now give the frame for us to work. And I think we'll have the time now to decide what are we going to do. Because I really think that the brain today, as much as Albert Einstein and his friend thought that understanding matter, particle physics, were the key thing at the beginning of the 20th century, today the new frontier is the brain. It's not the brain, it's the mind issue. You know, How can our little brain there, you know, 
uh, can, can consciousness emerge from that? This is something. Now, Henry believes that he will crack the code in 15 years. I'm a, mis a bit more skeptical, but I like his enthusiasm. I like their enthusiasm because without this enthusiasm, you wouldn't, you know, push it. So I think we need to do it. But it's very clear that neuroscience is the ultimate frontier. It is also, you know, understanding what we are, what memory is. You were speaking, as I understand, about the memory today at the, at the Holocaust ceremony. This is what makes humanity. And to try to be to able to understand it, I think is going to be key for our future. So I'm very excited, uh, and I hope that uh, in the future, and in, in, in the not too distant future, we will be able to put something very unique between both of our institutions of very high quality. And just looking at, you know, you have also to do the looking at the rankings. I saw that you, you know, you have to go to the Times Higher Education, to the Shanghai, and all this. We know the flaws of it, but we have to live with it. <laughs> but I think something, and I think both do very well, so showing their, their, their in fact, uh, quality. But I think which is something even more important for me is really the future. And when I see the, the, your, your ability also, like ours, to, to, to secure ERC grants, the European Research Council grant, which are for the first time, I think, merit-based. And we say in Europe, that's the most important. I think this is the future of Europe to have an education system, to have a research system which is based on merit. This is something that we had 100 years ago that we, to some extent we lost. Our American friends did a better job. But I think this is, and now of course we, we consider you as European because you're part of this European community, <laughs> at least of, of science and research. And saying that both, uh, both uh, you know, I was very impressed to look at it. When you look at the rankings of the 10 top institutions in Europe, you have two Swiss, you have three Israeli and four British. France, Germany, Spain, Italy is absent from that. It says a lot. It's a bit also the worrisome part of it for Europe. But I think we, between these top Israeli universities and Swiss universities, we can lead, I think, this renaissance of, of science and education to go and fund what I call really research universities because we know that we transmit our, our knowledge through research. That without research, you know, uh, the system will never work down the road. So, and I think in this area, a specific area, I think the hopes are, are immense because not only they go at the core what we are to try to understand what we are, but also there are major applications which are very important. We know today with the aging population, some of the neurodegenerative disease will be a major issue. Speaking about Alzheimer, for example, dementia is a major issue of uh, Western, of developed societies. And I think uh, through this, as you were saying, none of us has the capacity to, it, to do it by itself. So I think we have to work together. So I'm very hopeful that we will do something very unique with our friends that have the enthusiasm that is needed to do it. And you can count, certainly on EPFL and on my personal involvement to make this a success.